ではちょうど5時になったので、始めていけたらと思います。Okay, we would like to start the session now, which is Sustainability Challenge 2020. So, this is a global theme for this year's venture cafes, all、um, cities, across all cities. And then today, we would like to focus on SDG Sustainable Development Goal 3. So, the world with sustainable health and innovation. And I would like to invite wonderful speakers, Dr. Taruho Kuroda from Leo Pharma. Hey. hey, hello. Hey, how then, are you? Great, thank you for coming. And then, Dr. Hayato Urabe from Global Health Innovation Technology Fund. And also, Professor Tomoyoshi Koyanagi <laughs> from University of Tsukuba. Hi.、Uh, hello, so we would like to start now.、Oh. Let me yeah, change the slide. So, this is today's schedule. So, before I'm、um, starting the main、um, part of the session, I would like to briefly introduce about what is、um, Sustainability Challenge 2020. And then we would like to move into the main part to、um, share the activities from、um, Dr. Taruho Hayato and then also Tomoyoshi. And then we would like to take、uh, a long time for having a panel discussion. s To discuss about、um, how we can、uh, make, take actions and then make innovation for sustainable health. So, as you may know, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, adopted by all United Nations member states in 2015, at this heart are the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which is called SDGs. And which are an urgent call for action by all countries in a global partnership. SDGs are the blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. They address the global challenges we face, including those related to poverty, climate change, environmental degradation, and also、um, good health, which we're going to talk about today. The 17 goals are all interconnected, and in order to leave no one behind, It is important that we achieve them all by 2030. So, what is、um, Venture Cafe Global Sustainability Challenge 2020? So, we inspire by United Nations 2030 goals.、Um, we believe that Venture Cafe is a perfect place to gather, inspire, and then connect innovators into actions. So, that's why、um, we set a common theme for 2020. Um, innovation for sustainability across all、um, 11 locations of Venture Cafe Global, and then have a set of themes for、um, SDGs on each month to organize session, workshop, conversation tables to discuss about innovation for sustainability. And then we would like to ask two, action,、um, two questions throughout this program. One is what if we created a platform across 11 innovation hubs? To encourage and mobilize a variety of key players, for example, entrepreneurs, artists, activists, student corporations, and more to innovate around sustainable development. And what if we had the opportunity to make a lasting global impact on issues like hunger, climate action, and clean energy, and also good health, which we're gonna talk today? So, how do we do that? So, we set monthly global theme inspired by SDGs. And then also as a venture cafe local, as like Tokyo. And then we would like to share that with venture cafe global cities. And we set the theme for,、um, and then、um, organize a session around this topic to understand what is the current situation. And then we share the experience through the panel discussion and then think about how we can achieve the sustainable development goals. And We would like to share that、um, across the Venture Cafe global sites to know,、um, to learn from each other. So, this is um, 2020's um, monthly theme inspired by SDGs. And then June is Good Health. And today's session, we would like to focus on SDG 3 Good Health and Well Being. So, Good Health and Well Being, Goal 3, we have 13 targets and 26、um, indicators. 
Um, I don't explain all, but for example, achieve universal health coverage, including financial risk protection, access to quality essential health care service, and then access to say effective quality and affordable essential medicines and vaccines for all, which probably relates to this session today and then also support the research and development of vaccines and medicines for the communicable and then non-communicable diseases that primarily affect developing country, which is also a keyword for today's session. And I would like to briefly touch about the progress of goal three and also response to COVID-19. So before the pandemic, major progress was made improving the health of millions of people. Um, if you can um, have a look at the image on the right hand side. So under five deaths dropped from 9.8 million in 2000 to 5.4 million in 2017. And then also a vaccination resulted in 80% drop in measles deaths and then also the tuberculosis incidence rate declined by 21% between 2000 and 2011. Also same as um, in the HIV, it's um, declined by 37% in the area of Sub-Saharan Africa. However, more efforts are needed to fully eradicate a wide range of disease and address many different persistent and emerging health issues. So for example, if you can look at the tuberculosis part, still 10 million people develop tuberculosis in 2017. And, and the, at the bottom, there are an estimated 3.5 million more malaria cases compared to 2017 and 2016 in um, Africa. So how about the uh, um, impact of COVID-19? So the pandemic provides a watershed moment for health emergency, the preparedness, and then more investment in critical 21st century public services. So it is actually improving, but still we need to take more actions to achieve SDG 3. So if we can look in what Japan, um, this current status is. So you can have a look in SDG 3 here and it, the color is yellow, which is mean if you can see the rating in the left bottom, it means challenge remains. However, the score moderating increasing, but still inefficient to attain goals. So if we dive into the performance by each indicator, Japan is doing good, but still in the two um, indicator, for example, incidence of tuberculosis and then also subject well-being will still need to um, address to these points to by achieving the sustainable development goal by 2030. So Japan is doing a pretty good job, but still we need efforts to achieve universal health coverage, especially in developing countries. So if you look at this map, you can see there is a lot, lots of um, red um, countries, especially in developing countries, for example, Africa, Southeast Asia, and also South America. So today, in this session, we would like to share activities to reduce infectious disease in developing countries by working multilaterally. So for example, how Japan can support those um, developing countries to achieve the SDGs. And then also multi-sectorial. So not only um, the research institute and academia, we will uh, need the power to um, support each other with the industry sector as well. And then also how academia is working to fight against COVID-19. Then we would like to discuss how we can take actions and make innovation for sustainable health. So I would like to next um, dive into the main part and then pass to moderator, Dr. Taruho. Hi, Lisa, thank you so much for your great introduction to this wonderful discussion. I am Taruho Kuroda. Um, I belong to a pharmaceutical company called Leo Pharma. I am so delighted today to be a part of this global sustainable challenge. And everybody here, welcome to this session. You are always welcome to type your questions or comment in the, in the chat below, okay? Um, firstly, uh, today I will be uh, serving as a moderator for the discussion. 
But as a, a beginning of this discussion, I would like to tell you a little bit about my company, Leo Pharma. <clears throat> Leo Pharma is a Denmark-based global pharmaceutical company focused on dermatology. And we are committed to improving the quality of life of people with skin diseases. In addition to climate action, we are very much committed to enabling health to the global people. And this enabling health is very much based on the Responsible Business Act. So this, this just shows that we are highly committed to this SDG3, which is, a, which is today's session, the uh, main purpose, main topic. Now, uh, today we, we are going to have uh, Dr. Urabe and also Dr. Koyanagi. And then first, Dr. Urabe is going to tell us about his story related to SDG3, sustainable health. Urabe-san, can you please share your screen? Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I will share my screen now. Please hold on a second. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so nice to meet everyone um, on this Venture Cafe. Thank you for the opportunity, the organizers. Uh, it's always nice to um, attend these new events and meet new people. I think it's uh, the un underlying scheme is uh, you know, basically meet, meet new people and uh, share ideas and uh, you know, form partnerships. I think um, it's, it's very good for, for me to be here. So thank you again for the um, invitation. Just a little disclaimer that uh, whatever I talked about is, uh, you know, uh, it, it's from, you know, I'm from Jihit Fund, but uh, doesn't necessarily mean that everything that I talk is responsible for uh, what's going to be all the beliefs in the viewpoint of Jihit. So just, just to, just a little disclaimer there. So with regards to Jihit, um, uh, what we do in terms of the SDG, I think, uh, I think if we go a little bit further into the SDG 3, you see SDG 3.3, which is by 2030, ending the epidemics of AIDS, TB, malaria, and neglected tropical diseases. This is actually the portion where we are really um, targeting and uh, uh, looking for solutions there. So, of course, infectious disease is uh, one of the largest thing, lar largest focus here today. But it is a very intertwined um, phenomena, so to speak. You know, it starts off maybe if you're in a poverty. Um, you know, you know, poor setting. If you're living in, in a lower middle income country, lower income country, of course, you will have uh, inferior hygiene, which leads to maybe contraction of infectious diseases, leading to difficulties in attending schools or working, which leads to uh, lower pr productivity or economic vitality, which uh, continues these vicious cycles of infection. And where Jihit comes in uh, is uh, where what you see on the on the left is innovation failure. So basically. Uh, where this disease onset and this demand on the left, where it creates the economic uh, vicious cycle of economy, which I have just shown in a previous slide, where we would come in is the product development. Uh, basically, what, what we do is that we, uh, we give investment for R&D to create different cures or different vaccines or diagnostics to kick off uh, research and development to create products and eventually uh, to resolve um, the issues that are seen in developing countries to create treatments and then of course, reduce this disease onset. Where we are um, in terms of uh, our innovativeness, so to speak, uh, can be summarized into three. I'm not gonna go, I mean, we'll probably go into details when we have in the panel is uh, one of them is innovative financing. The other one is open innovation and Third is strategic partnership in consideration of access and delivery. Um, I will probably touch on this uh, when we get into the discussion session. Um, as I said, we are a fund. Uh, we're a um, public and private partnership. Uh, um, half of our fund is coming from the public sector or the government, um, both from Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Health, Labor and, and Welfare, and UNDP, and a quarter coming from the Gates Foundation, the Wellcome Trust, and the rest coming from uh, Japanese and global pharmaceutical companies and diagnostics companies. We have so far invested over $200 million in our R&D since our inception in 2013. Basically, what we do is to catalyze partnerships and then uh, we facilitate open innovations to leverage Japanese technologies to 
move things forward. And uh, these are all on our website, but uh, we do currently have over 40 programs running in our portfolio uh, where our team uh, basically looks over them and uh, basically trying to create different products to deliver to the, those people who are in need. Um, so this is just another form of uh, partnership. We not only look at the R&D side, but we also look at the access and deliver side. We don't necessarily invest in that area, but partnerships in, is incredibly important for access and delivery. And of course, we're looking at SDG 3 today, but uh, something like SDG 10, basically inequality, uh, reducing inequality and SDG 17 uh, partnerships, also something very deep in our um, heart as well. So with that, uh, maybe I'll just end with a quote. Uh, Your active and creative minds harmonize with others, ignite innovations for those most neglected. So um, looking forward to the panel discussion. Great, Robinson, thank you so much. Um, I, I think this GHIT Funds activity is one of the most aggressive way to fight against neglected diseases. I, I really love it. Now, Kuanagi san, are you ready? Yep. Please. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me for this wonderful opportunity. And I'm very excited to talk in front of you, uh, mainly introduction of our program, a research studio and the Spark Global Network. My name is Tomo Koyanagi. Uh, please call me Tomo. That's easier for you to uh, to talk uh, to pronounce it. Uh, I myself is a professor of the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Tsukuba. But uh, from my career, uh, you will see that many uh, activity in business, both business and academia, and also NPO and others. I'm deeply involved in the. Uh, project for the uh, drug discovery and basic uh, for the basic science I was uh, trained as a biochemist and when I was at Stanford I started to see the how we can translate our uh, our science into the uh, real world and then immediately after that I realized there's a huge gap to make it realize the basic study into the real market and mainly that uh, those kind of gap is just a line uh, between the scientists and the manufacturers because of the misunderstanding or not sharing the goal of the, the image of the goal of the projects. So uh, I, I was wondering how I can work on that. And, and then uh, I was lucky to get a position at the Stanford University to be trained by Daria Moshi Rosen. And uh, I was just joining her laboratory as a scientist, but she realized those kind of gap is very, very important. Uh, and it's a kind of huge barrier to uh, translate the basic technology into the real world. And then he, she started a Spark program uh, which it is supporting academic uh, researchers to start up companies. Um, so she started Kai Pharmaceuticals in 2002, and that was the, actually the, for the heart attack drug development company. And she spent a year, one year, uh, to uh, start business outside of Stanford University. Stanford University don't allow faculties to run business uh, while they are at uh, teaching job. So she took sabbatical leave and then uh, started this company. But it was very difficult experience for her. Even though for the Stanford University other professors, she felt uh, she shouldn't let them do the same thing. So that the Spark program is supporting most academicians to realize the, uh, the science into the clinic. And after more than 10 years, we now have a lot of colleagues in, in globally and now more than 20 countries uh, is running the Spark projects. So far I just talked about just life science or drug discovery, but 
for uh, in terms of the SDGs, we started to feel this network has very str uh, big strengths and uh, global health issues. For example, uh, four years ago, uh, Zika virus infection uh, happened in Brazil. Uh, around that time, uh, one of the projects from Stanford University was translated into Brazil uh, to cure the, or uh, to develop the anti-Zika virus uh, a reagent. So that was the beginning of our activity. And right now, we are also working on the COVID-19 project. At least uh, right now, two products are about to get into the clinical trial. In Japan, we are running a research studio in collaboration with Stanford Spark. And in this program, we are uh, let the researchers to understand what the product development is and also what's the business model is. Taking advantage of the many supporters uh, inside of Japan and also global support, uh, we are developing our projects. And I personally working on the creating the ecosystem. So please join our activity. So these are uh, QR codes for the, our events. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kwanai-san. I love this spark, you know, this is wonderful. I mean, there's so many translational barriers in this, in this field of healthcare. So I think it's awesome activities. Well, firstly, maybe we should touch on COVID-19 situation. And there is a question from Catherine I. Lee. You know, uh, to Dr. Rabe, has COVID-19 changed your focus in terms of infectious diseases and are you fun, funding R&D for COVID-19 vaccine? Okay. Add some. Yeah, should I? Okay, uh, um, well, thanks for the question. I think it's a very pertinent question. I think, um, you know, as a, as a funder in a global health area, uh, I think we, we get that similar um, question a lot. I think it's a, it's a question of um, priorities. If you look at how much, how many different coalitions and how many clinical trials are currently being conducted in, in COVID area, you can see the amount of money that's being poured into that area of research and you know, vaccine development, diagnostics, therapeutics. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot. And uh, you know, we, we've, we've had this existential um, question having been you know, sort of a leader in the global health funding agency for quite a long time. Uh, you know, whether we should, uh, you know, play some part in, in this, you know, COVID area. But I think um, we, soon we came to the realization that uh, what happens with this, um, um, what, uh, what's um, called uh, COVIDization, so to speak, everything is being um, poured into all the investments getting into COVID and what's actually happening for some other infectious diseases. Um, some of the investments towards uh, other investments are actually not being addressed or it's being addressed less because of so much money going into COVID. So our, our, uh, our standpoint, at least at this moment, um, is to um, stand strong in where we're focusing on neglected tropical diseases. Basically, they don't get funding from, from the get-go initially. So it's getting even more neglected during this COVID time. So it, we, we believe it's more important for us at least now to make sure that the funding is available for those people who are neglected in this very tough time. So, so at this moment, we're not really into that space. Hayato-san, I loved your wording on COVIDization, you know, I mean, no, it's, not mine. it's not mine, but. Okay, <laughs> but still, everybody's looking at COVID-19 situations and then like, you know, hey, you guys are forgetting about neglected diseases even more, right? So, I mean, I this is real SDG, you know? You, you stay focused on what you have to do. I really like it. Kwanangisun, I know that you you also have some activities on COVID-19 and you also mentioned you know, a few activities in your hands. Would you want to elaborate a little bit more? Well, so one of the topic which I um, well uh, take advantage of the Stanford Spark Network is the well uh, anti COVID nineteen activity is not only a vaccine and anti uh, well un 
Thai virus reactions. So COVID-19 has many other um, symptoms at the hospital and as, after hospitalized, the patients will having the trouble in the glass and sometimes the respirator has to be uh, used. And uh, some, uh, some patients have the se severe inflammation. And then we are focusing more about that part. So one of the, well, I, I don't want to say it's a good thing, but we realize uh, those kind of infectious diseases has many stages of the patients or decreasing or increasing. Even though for the recovery, we need to put some other reagents or drugs. So uh, one of the reason why Japanese COVID-19 uh, mortality is low is that one of my friends were talking about, we are monitoring very carefully about the uh, very severe stage of the COVID-19 patients. So to support those kind of doctors, we are developing two drugs. So uh, both of them are targeting to, uh, uh, to reduce the inflammation. So COVID-19 patients will have the difficulty and the, the, uh, to control the, the lung cells. So we are uh, trying to reduce the inflammation around that. Wonderful. I mean, it's, it's so fantastic that, you know, your project are, you know, moving forward to, uh, to fight against COVID-19. But I also imagine that you've experienced a couple of hurdles to move things forward to fight against COVID-19. You know, uh, thinking of the, you know, ideal situations, maybe you had some barriers, right? Would you want to describe such situations? Um, I have to be careful because it's very um, uh, pro scientific in some cases, uh, but I try not to. Uh, one of the keywords is the drug repurposing. So if you have any, uh, well, even for this situation, uh, many, for example, like in Japan, Abidan is the most famous drug which used to use for the MRI. Uh, but now uh, people want to use for uh, COVID-19, but it's not approved yet. Why? It's, we, we have to test in the, in the clinic very carefully. Evidence-based medicine is needed. Something like that, uh, other drug also could be applicable for COVID-19. But so for this COVID-19 project, it's maybe okay because the many people were willing to pay for that or a funding for the basic study is okay. But for other drugs, for example, like Zika was also issues like dengue or other infectious diseases, many drugs existing in the developing, developed countries could be applicable for those kind of applications. But in most cases, it's, uh, well, it, the patents ex expired. It's not profitable. That's why the pharmaceutical company is not willing to develop for the de underdeveloped countries. So that's one of the issue uh, which we can set a nice or a good way to provide those kind of value uh, to, to, to support uh, uh, those kind of diseases. I think it's great uh, item uh, to be involved in the SDGs uh, target three. Mm -hmm. Great. I mean, I heard from you that this, it, you know, one issue is a typical drug repositioning or drug repurposing problems, right? Mm -hmm. So there's an existing drug which should work on certain neglected diseases. So we should use these drugs for these people in Africa and other developing countries, but this is not going to work because business model doesn't allow it, or you know, patent uh, expires, whatever the reasons are, right? And then mm -hmm. this is so sad. And I, I, I think we have to overcome such situations. And I imagine, Rabisan, you also have such situations in your job. Would you want to describe such situations if you can? 
Um, such, uh, sorry, just a clarification, uh, such situations where uh, I, like uh, drug repurposing doesn't work. Yeah, so I guess, um, you know, drug repurposing, um, the idea in itself is, is, uh, is good if you, if you already have some product that's already been tested for safety and if you're repurposing it, maybe the drug development stage, it, the, the time it takes for development would be much shorter where you would think that it's going to get to the patient uh, much quicker. I think that that's where the um, uh, incentive comes from. But I think um, at the end of the day, if you're trying to deliver them at the, uh, you know, let's say in, in developing countries, for instance, let's say you, you pick a country in Africa, um, you, you have to really think about the local context uh, as to what they are being treated for and you know what what what's the social um, status or what's the demographics that you're trying to target. Um, and so it's not just as simple of delivering, or, you know, producing and bring it to the country because um, um, that in itself is insu insu insufficient. You have to think about uh, you know, anthropological factors, sociological factors, um, economic factors, uh, um, you name it, in order for it to be uh, really be delivered well, especially for neglected tropical uh, drugs for drug, uh, neglected tropical diseases. Um, where they are not really um, market incentive driven, so to speak. Yeah, so we clearly see market issue, marketing issue right here. Um, maybe I get back to COVID uh, story a little bit because Anna asked us a question. Thank you, Anna. Um, Dr. Urabe, you mentioned the COVIDization. What do you believe is the biggest reasoning behind this? Um, so, well, I mean, I, you know, um, I did mention about, um, you know, GHIT's activities in COVID. Of course, we're not making any direct investments, of course, um, but it's not to say that we're not doing anything in that area. We, we try to form, you know, help with partnerships. Uh, we're part of, uh, you know, very big, um, you know, coalition to try to give them uh, feedback, you know, in terms of some of the expertise that we have so that, you know, to get them to get them rolling. You know, it's not to say that we're completely non-collaborative or incorporative so we are you know cooperating in a sense um, as for the question that you raised about uh, why um, covidization is happening of course this this term was actually coined by i think it was um, dr madupai from mcgill university um, but um, so in terms of um, why this is happening i think a lot of the reason is uh is uh, the fact that it's affecting a lot of the um High income countries or OECD countries, because you know, of course, if they are affected more, um, then the you know, um, economy is going to be affected more, and then uh, a lot more interest from the developed countries to, to create um, you know, drugs, vaccines, and diagnostics very quickly. Um, you know, if, if this, uh, you know, um, if this, uh, let's say, this pandemic was only uh, in uh, very small parts of uh, a rural, rural area of um, um, somewhere in Africa, then I think, of course, you wouldn't have caught this much attention. Um, and also the other factor is uh, that we live in a very um, connected society right now, that people travel from one place to the other. So if you do see some spread initially, then you know, you, you know, people would be more um, cautious or would be more, you know, they feel that their lives are uh, in jeopardy um, because people do travel and then things are getting infected and of course, uh, infectious in itself is infectious. So I think those are the factors as well. Multiple factors, but um, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Well, I see Anna nodding. So thank you for answering the question, Ayata san. Um, okay, let's get uh, today. We have we are uh, uh, delighted to have such active audience, and I have question here for Tomo. Um, for you as a professional in your field, what are the advantage of the SPARC organization specifically? The Zika virus example suggests a very fast intervention when new viruses emerge. What are the advantages does the SPARC network provide? Okay, thank you very much for the question. Uh, I'm so we so far spent like 10 years as an independent activity. Uh, Stanford Spark provided a lot of knowledge and expertise to other, uh, other countries and we learn from them. And now uh, they really need our power uh, network itself. Uh, 
So, of course, U.S. is the high, well, most of the country inside, uh, definitely in Baltics. And they, they have a lot of um, experience to develop drugs. And uh, the drug sales is the billion, billion, billion dollars and trillion dollars. And then uh, what happened in the U.S.? Uh, well, actually, the, the pre-session, we discussed about what what's going on in the U.S., but how come the mortality rate is so high in the U.S. in the most advanced country? So I was wondering about that. They are still struggling with how they can fight against COVID-19. And they also need some advice from other countries. So immediately after uh, COVID-19 uh, program, uh, pro program happened in early in February, we had a meeting as a global and how, what kind of technology we have to share with other countries. And around that time, we just introduced our uh, expert in the uh, virology. And well, many people started to say the antivirus agent. So that was okay. Uh, of course, many, well, uh, pharmaceutical companies and the governments paying for that. So they are, they are comfortable as this and they are working very, very hard to fight against COVID-19. At the same time, we realized we have some other uh, power to support them. For example, like manufacturing or uh, transportation uh, uh, or like um, getting more medical information directly from patients. And in February, the number of patients were very, very low in the US. So they are just willing to support somebody. And uh, I got the request from the Stanford about uh, the medical data of the patients because that they already know that we have the cruise ship issues and some uh, patients records should be existing somewhere in Japan. So they want to get those you know, information. They already know that some information will be issued. And then the target uh, protein itself can control the, the blood pressure. So they just want to get information about blood pressure. But um, so far for this COVID-19 issues, we cannot deliver that information to, uh, to sample. Probably those kind of network will be aid for the future pandemics. So for that issues, we will work together with them. And for the manufacturing, we introduced some companies, a Japanese company to make um, peptides very quickly. And uh, well, eventually so far they are working inside of California, but we are working together with the uh, commercial production level. So, those kind of things, not only scientists, science has to be translated. We have streamlined of the, the network to be commercialized. So we are taking advantage of the global network, not only US, we have strengths and uh, strong teams in uh, Taiwan and Australia and even uh, Africa, we have partners. So we will take advantage of that. Great answer. Thank you so much. I mean, from your answer, I got a few thoughts actually. Firstly, we know, we almost know that the COVID-19 would not be the last pandemic for human beings, right? There will be another one in coming years. So we have to be prepared for that. We have to build up some even stronger network to fight against such pandemic faster. And secondly, as, a, as one of the Japanese citizens, I am quite concerned about uh, supply of vaccines because Japanese um, vaccine, vaccine production uh, capability is not so high. And actually, Japan is not in the bottom of this list. You know, there are many companies which has much weaker uh, power mm -hmm. of making vaccines, right? So it's also another question of, you know, sustainability globally, you know, like, so because US 
government can pay more, do US uh, citizens get vaccines faster, right? That's, that doesn't make sense to me. You know, I think we have to balance that. So, you know, so those points I, 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 I thought about it. Now, let's move on a little bit. I want to touch upon partnership because, you know, healthcare uh, business is so complicated that we cannot do this business, you know, by just one scientist or one university or one company, but a lot of partners have to collaborate. Right. So, and then I want to mention that SDG 17 also mentioned or it features partnership. So partnership is also an important agenda for SDGs actually. Um, and I know that both Hayato-san and Tomo-san are working cross border you know, and then, you know, connecting people to make things happen. This is Venture Cafe's credo, right? I mean, this is what you two are doing, right? And I'm so, you know, wonderful. I, I, I'm so grateful about that. Uh, would you want to discuss like how your uh, partnership is contributing to SDGs, especially in health? What's up? Maybe you can tell, you know, what are success cases what are hurdles that you feel you you face in the real, you know, your real work? Hayato san, do you? Okay. Um, yeah, I think um, as I mentioned, partnerships is uh, is is very important. I think um, you know the fact that I'm um, in this uh, webinar or uh, in this venture cafe today is you know could be a start of new partnership. Who knows? Uh, whoever is uh, participating might be interested in GHIT and uh, you know we do have some programs uh, within collaboration with um, Australian Australian um, institutes as well so you know who, who knows I think those people who come from Australia uh, you know we have something um, we might have something in common um, in terms of partnerships um, of course the uh, GHIT fund uh, we fund um, what all the investment that we make our own partnership it has to be a partnership between Japan and overseas so, you know, if you're only, if your innovation is only coming from Japan or if your only innovation is coming from abroad, then of course they're not going to be eligible for, for investment. And, and um, so, so in, in, that, in that sense, um, all the investment that we make are on, you know, towards partnerships. And of course, as I mentioned in the slides earlier, um, our fund itself is a, an amalgam of a partnership between um, Japanese government, uh, overseas private sector, and uh, different foundations, you know, Gates and Welcome. So, you know, we are based on partnership and we fund towards partnership. Uh, maybe I'll just can give you an, an example. We, we do have a program um, um, against, um, you know, schistosomiasis. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a neglected tropical um, disease um, where the formula where the disease has been uh, with uh, drug has been available, praziquantel has been available for a very long time, but it hasn't been really being um, a very good um, solution for pediatric application because it's the, the tablets are very big and it's very bitter. Um, but we do have a collaboration uh, where um, Estella, as a Japanese pharma, they work together with Merck along with other partners um, to create this uh, pediatric formulation for praziquantel against schistosomiasis, which is going to hopefully come into the market in a few years, um, um, which was only possible um, through partnerships because, you know, it is a Japanese farmer in partnership with a, uh, a German version of Merck um, um, that got together to create, um, uh, along with like, you know, Swiss partners, you know, Brazilian partners who manufactures and, you know, African universities to do the clinical trials, et cetera. So, um, so in a nutshell, um, yeah, so you know, we are based out of partnership. We invest in partnerships, and you know, I just gave you an example of a you know partnership that was successful, that has been successful. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm so thrilled to see the slides that you showed previously. I mean, you know, you showed the governmental body, you showed uh, Gates Foundation, and also you had a lot of pharmaceutical companies as partners, 
And then you are now even connecting between pharma and pharma to make good things happen. And, and then you have full of project running to, to fight against neglected disease. And I think this is a very strong initiative of GHIT Fund. I really love it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Koyanagi san, you, I know you are also an expert of making partnership, right? Please. Yeah, first of all, we are trying to making a partnership to apply for a GHIT Fund. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, yeah, but, uh, Sana and I, we, 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 know, we, we, we know each other and you know, he's been helping us with partnerships as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is great opportunity, Chris. Um, you know what? Um, when um, I started, uh, so that was the 2016, I realized that the GCR uh, um, getting more and pop, uh, popular. And then uh, I was thinking, oh, healthcare, I'm working on, it's okay. I'm fighting against cancer or Alzheimer, Parkinson. Well, I'm a part of the SDGs. But well, after well, a couple of months later, I realized I tried to search on the web and SDGs, cancer and Alzheimer, well, nothing there. What's going on? And then uh, it, it's very strange. Uh, many talented scientists started to see the well, we have to think seriously about how we can contribute to the uh, sustainable uh, operation of the, the, this globe, Earth. And then I think they started to take advantage of their technology to tie up with the, some like uh, uh, virologists or infectious disease uh, uh, professionals to think about how they can contribute to the global health. So they head up uh, to think about seriously about that. And I think the spark people also say in that situation. So most of them, including myself, I was working on the, the cancer biology at Stanford and uh, I wrote a paper about breast cancer and prostate cancer, but using similar technology, my friend is work, uh, now in Brazil and she's uh, working on breast mania and well, it's biology. So it's connected, but have to apply specifically for those kind of diseases. So those kind of cross um, field uh, collaboration partnership also happening in scientific side. So we have to uh, accelerate that. At least US has strengths in science, but they have to know how they should apply for the, the, the public health issues. And then of course, global health issues is important because of that, as Hayatosan said, we are trapping around the world and something happened in China is expanding very rapidly. That's not only issue in China, we are in the same world. So we have to fight together. So that's the, the yeah, uh, impression of the, what we are doing at, as a part of the spark for the network. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I mean, you know, both of you are working uh, for SDGs, but I feel like uh, Hayato-san's activity is more towards developing countries, whereas uh, Tomo-san's activities uh, is, is maybe more towards, you know, the, the collaboration among advanced countries to make things even smoother, right? I, and I think both are really important, you know, to to make the world, you know, even better places. All right, um, maybe thank you, thank you, Anna, for another question. Are there key? Are there any key factors that make a business plan that encompasses SDGs more successful? So it's about the question of business plan. And I really think this is one of the key factors today's dis discussion. Um, who wants to start, a, start off? No? <laughs> so probably I will start because uh, in the press session, we are talking about those kind of issues. Uh, so these days, uh, some pharmaceutical companies started not to say their sales, or, I mean, revenue as a, a most important uh, 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 indication for the for their own activity, and the, probably the 
this is one of the the uh, change of the situation for the investment. You know the ESG investment also happening. So how the, the company is willing to support uh, healthcare issues, global healthcare issues, is one of the item to be evaluated as an investable or sustainable company. I think that's the big, one of the big uh, change uh, we are seeing in recently. So uh, I want to let, uh, well, Japanese pharmaceutical companies, managers, or um, well, uh, presidents, CEOs to aware about those kind of change. Uh, I searched on the web and they realized that some companies still claiming that we were focusing on cancer biology and uh, fight against cancer and uh, work for SDGs. That's great things. Cancer is very sad disease. We have to conquer that. But uh, we have to understand uh, properly how we can contribute to other parts of the world too. So that's, I think that Taro san said, uh, I'm working uh, to connect to uh, the developed uh, countries, but we already started to have the connection with like uh, uh, Africa, Zimbabwe or uh, uh, Brazil is a big country already, but we already have the, some other countries uh, connections to, to support them. Mm -hmm. Rabe san do you have some additional comments? Um, yeah, sure. I think uh, I could probably comment from um, two ends. I think uh, one coming from uh, sort of the sort of the you know triple bottom line, quadruple bottom line kind of uh, um, answer. I think you know of course you, you you you've probably heard about this in the triple bottom line, looking at you know uh, you know basically profit and you know. The, the you know basically the people on the planet so that has been the triple bottom line you know um, basically those those do address you know what's surrounding and then you know quadruple bottom line coming onto it so come sort of like uh, you know humanistic or spiritual portion that's around it that would help um, um, deliver they'll help create um, each uh, organization's message how they're going to be why they're going to be approaching um, those issues so you know initially the you know the single uh you know the you know initial bottom line is basically the you know the profit making then the double bottom line came in and then the quadruple bottom line came in so in, incorporating you know quadruple bottom line type of message in time inside of the business plan would be one um, approach perhaps the other point uh, that i would, may want to make is uh issues with the uh with regards to target product profiles um if you're trying to um deliver something to developing countries, if, if your product or if your business plan is going to incorporate something that has, um, that indicates market in developing countries, then you, know, you really have to know what's really needed in those um, countries from multiple, uh, looking at it from multiple perspectives, uh, you know, not only the price, but, you know, uh, demographic, social economics, uh, geopolitical um, factors, uh, and those have to be incorporated into that um, business plan. Um, so, yeah, I think it really depends on what sort of um, you know business you're in, and uh, I think uh, you know, I'm happy to talk to you more about it. Um, you know, if there's a specific question, but I can probably give you a very general comment on that. Thank you, Hayato-san. It's a wonderful comment. But actually, Kwa Nagisen has next session to attend, so he has to leave now. <laughs> Do you have you written some words for for participants today? Yeah. Um, I wrote something like this, uh, new understanding of the value, and I put something that tea ceremony style. <laughs> so Japanese people are good in the creating the different side of the value. So even though the, it's, it's very cheap uh, tea cup, we see the value. When you touch, like Taruko-san touched it on this, and then it's the cup, the tea cup with the pooch. Tarufosa made history on that. So this is one of the way of the thinking. Even for the drug discovery, we are uh, creating uh, history, putting the history onto the drugs. So that uh, named evidence. So it's very important to think about what's the value. And also another side of the value, we see the value of the network. Understanding of the COVID-19 is the value. You want to pay for the understanding of the COVID-19, how you can protect against that. So those kind of things, we are providing value 
uh, well, like a priceless value. So uh, that's the one of the, the way how we can make business side, uh, well, enable uh, successful uh, SDGs uh, in the healthcare. Great, I love the barrio. Thank you so much, Tomo-san. I know you have to leave. Um, I really appreciate you joining here today. Thank you so much. And thank you uh, very much. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. And, you know, Urabe-san and I will take care of the, the remaining questions. So don't worry, you go to the next session. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Thank, thank, you, much. thank you very uh, much, Tomo-san, thank Bye. you. So I'm so happy to see a lot of good questions. Yeah. Uh, we will take care of them. Maybe we don't have enough time by the end of this session. So continuing this session, if you are on this uh, Zoom, you will be able to talk to talk with us. Okay. Yeah. Rabe-san, do you want to show your comment, like a word thing? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I think mine is, a, is very simple. Um, oh, I love it. Is it showing? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of all, all the issues that we're dealing with today is not something that's uh, resolvable by one entity, one person, one entity, one organization, uh, one sector. So it, it's, just, uh, it's just about, you know, people coming together uh, and I think uh, in terms of what we discussed um, earlier about partnerships, I think uh, maybe, you know, I was thinking about uh, um, about the you know, webinar um, today, you know, if there's any, you know, take home message that we can have, um, you know, in terms of um, formation of um, partnership, um, you know, con considering this, you know, very difficult times that we see uh, uh, with COVID, you know, you know, you see COVID impacting uh, you know, not only the um, you know, infectious, you know, not, it's not only a medical problem, of course, as I mentioned, it could be a labor, uh, you know, issues in labor, economy, um, uh, you, you name it, politics, social inequalities, etc. And um, I think we're still very far from the SDG goal, reaching the SDG goal, um, to be quite frank, looking at how things are looking with COVID. Um, but in order for us to try to reach that, um, um, I, I put three C's. I think, you know, it's always good to have something catchy for you, you to um, have. Um, one, one, uh, one of the three C's is um, camaraderie. So it's basically sharing um, the same vision in, in solidarity, sort of, um, you know, basically meaning, you know, partnership forming, formation of partnership in itself to, to try to achieve that same goal. Um, that's uh, one important factor. Uh, so that's the first C, camaraderie. Um, second one is um, cross-cutting understanding. Um, so this is more things like uh, diversity and um, equity um, inclusion, and try to include everyone's idea, different sector. Um, you know, everyone has different opinions. Um, everyone's from different background. You know, try to uh, incorporate um, all those. Um, um, you know, do not disregard just because you're coming from different backgrounds and try to be inclusive. So that's the second one, cross-cutting understanding. And the third one is uh, um, communication and coordination. Um, you know, if, you're, if you're doing the first two, you obviously have to communicate constructively um, to all the other um, stakeholders um, that you're dealing with. So, um, you know, communication becomes a very important um, factor. So maybe I'll, I'll leave it with that um, three C's. Um, so that you can get something to take home. Fantastic. I love these three C's, you know, it's much better than, you know, normal marketing three C's. Yeah. Okay, um, I have one minute to talk. Um, today, uh, I wanna say this, you know, um, it's about business model. You know, SDG, when you say about that, everybody say, oh, SDG is good, we should do that. But unless, you put things, you put SDGs into numbers, real numbers, it doesn't make differences. So I found these numbers. So as to achieve SDGs, all the SDGs, we will need 97 trillion USDs. And that is supposed to create uh, 380, 380 million jobs in the future. So SDG, 
it's not just a goal, but this is something that we can, you know, profit from SDGs, right? And this, I think, is very important to know. All the, you know, CEOs of the com company has to take this into consideration so that companies can change their behaviors. All right, time is over, Lisa. Perfect, thank you so much. That was an amazing session and we've got a lots of great comments here. So maybe after finishing the session and if you have time, we can also go through that. But thank you so much, um, Taroho-san and Hayato-san. We lot. really learned a, a lot and then the discussion was wonderful. And then we really need to, yeah, that would be great that there is a Sydney community here and then the Tokyo community here. So I think this is also a great start to like corroborate each other. But thank you so much. So thank before you. ending the session, I would like to um, send you the connecting form. So I.